ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's been a while, but this is our somewhat monthly show where you submit images based on some theme and then we critique them. Uh, we're on the Raw Doctor page right now because we have the Raw Doctors going on and then down here we have the monthly assignment critiques. Embarrassingly, this is the June assignment that we are just getting around to critiquing now. There was no July assignment at this time and there is no August assignment at this time, but we will be back after we get done some of this travel here and uh, more assignments and of course you can always participate in our weekly Instagram challenges. I'm Toby. And I'm Christina. Good, thanks. Glad you're with us. Um, and uh, this assignment that we are critiquing was long exposure, one second or longer. I love pictures like this. I know. Um, <laughs> because it, you are capturing something that you, the eye doesn't see normally. You're you're making more art. You know. I feel. I. I heard or I saw this quote recently. Um, I'm going to completely butcher it because I don't remember exactly. But it was something along the lines of it's really easy to uh, use, to take something extraordinary and photograph it and make a cool picture. But it's really, really difficult to take something that is ordinary that you wouldn't otherwise find interesting and actually make it interesting in a photograph. Yeah. Okay. So I just, you're... I'm just playing devil's advocate. Sure. Here. I understand what you're saying, but I'm going to continue liking them and I'm going to continue to like some of these ones that we have submitted. Uh, and then we're going to click through and give our feedback as we often do. And we always love to hear your thoughts, especially because Christine and I don't always agree on all of these. So, Ready to jump right into it? Yes. Okay. Our first image up tonight. Is this black and white? Exposure time. Oh, we just broke our rule on the very first picture. Oh, no. It's a half a second. Mm. Well. We're going to bend the rule here because it's our show and we can do whatever we please. Um, and in this case, I think half a second works very nicely. Yes. So. Half a second works perfectly for what was trying, what this person was trying to accomplish in the photo. Um, and it's a cool picture. It's, you know, it's like street photography. It's pretty cool. It's really busy. And I don't know if I love that or if I don't. It's, I'm trying to make sense of the place. And I guess. It almost looks Venice to me. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think maybe either wider, a wider shot may have been a little bit more, I don't know, I think part, part of the thing that's throwing me off is that the subjects, which are the little blurs, are smack dab in the center of the image. And I feel like I wish they were on the lower third and that I got a, a better view of the boats and the water. Um, so, but that's just me, you know, assuming that that picture would work if it was composed that way. I, it's, it's still a really cool image. It is a neat image. The reason I said I think half a second works is any longer than that. And these people are going to be blurred enough that yeah. we just lose them. Uh, we, you'd still see them, but it wouldn't have the same impact as these busy people moving about on the street. Right. I, I, I agree with you, Christine. I mean, these awnings and this shutters right here are really kind of um, adding to some clutter in this image. And uh, I don't know. I mean, at, they on the one hand, they add context, and then on the other hand, they make it kind of busy. So I don't right. know. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is, uh, you know, maybe from another window or I do like your idea of maybe a little bit less of this foreground here and a little bit more of the water and the boats. Uh, I also like the flowers to be out of it. They're just Tell you what, cut I, off. I would, I would print this image. I, like I could see this image in a museum somewhere hmm. as part of like a street photography exhibit. Okay. Um, it also feels a little crooked to me too. 
uh, the, the left here is a little bit lower than the right, and I think it could be straightened. But otherwise, I mean, I think this is a nice image, and I think the black and white treatment really helps to simplify it as well. Thank you, somebody. Now, moving from a busy black and white street to a primordial jungle from Christine. This is cool. This is very cool. I feel like we've seen this place before from somebody else. Yeah. Uh, this is a gorgeous setting, and I think this is framed really nicely. A lot of times we talk about filling the frame with the subject. In this case, it's the waterfall. But we've, we've got um, such nice surroundings here that help to frame it. I think that extra space really works. Yeah. 40 seconds. 40 seconds um, is nice, gets you really smooth water. I like it, but uh, you did a good job. There's, you know, it doesn't feel blown out, no detail lost in here. Um, and you might even could touch this up and make that a little bit whiter, even though probably naturally it is a little bit brown, but to give it a little bit more uniform there. And the only thing that I would say is that this catches my eye from time to time. These ferns here are blowing in the wind. Everything else looks pretty sharp, even though for 40 seconds. Uh, there's nothing you can really do about that but maybe take a couple of shots at 40 seconds long, and maybe for one of those, the wind wouldn't be blowing as much, uh, and it would just kind of, I think it, it would help the impact of this image because everything is so crisp except for the water. Yeah, I, I kind of like the imperfection there. Um, I, it does kind of pull me back from the waterfall, but I don't know, I, I sort of like that everything isn't like perfect. Really love the light in this picture. Yeah. It's it's really cool light, um, and I don't. I mean, I don't. There's nothing I would change about this. Nice, good. Uh, one thing that I that I see impacts a lot of images like this negatively is like logs and sticks that get stuck in the river. I usually, if they're small enough, don't have a problem moving those before I take pictures like this. So, I mean, I see a couple of logs in this image, but yeah. they don't take my eye away from. I don't know. They're not distracting. I agree. So. I agree. Okay. Thank you, Christine. We've got 30 seconds. This is, I believe, the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. It says that. I can read. San Francisco Bay Bridge. This is the one that they've lit up with that LED art installation oh, yeah. that plays and does different patterns. But I imagine over 30 seconds, pretty much all of them are on. And so we just have it all lit up. Yeah, it's it's... This is a cool image. It's a, a long exposure. I would like to see it in black and white. I'm yeah. not saying you should do it. No. For them. Okay. I'm just saying that I'd like to see it in black Why and white. Why not? We have the power. We can just but it's, I mean, right creating there. a good black and white takes more than just changing the treatment. It does. Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, yes, but we can take a quick look. I, I, like the black and white, I think the reason why you were thinking about the black and white is the color we are getting on these foreground piers uh, from probably the, the lamps. We're casting yes. in a kind of greenish glow. Yes, I'm uh, not a fan of that. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that either. I like that the seagull sat still for 30 seconds for this picture. Uh, how do you feel about the stuff in the foreground in the first place? I don't really have a problem with it. Um, I feel like I, I wish that the end of the bridge sort of coincided with the or it's it framed the those things more sorry we we're rusty on this I realized i could give you some more screen real estate there um do you like that they frame a little bit i what would you're saying? i would like for the bridge to frame those more so mm. maybe a cropping to the left so that the bridge ends. Yeah, I don't know. Closer. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I think I think overall I really like this. You've got a nice straight horizon. I like the swoop swoop of the bridge. The, the objects in the foreground, um, I do think it works better as a black and white because we had some competing color casts going on there and, and uh, we don't with a black and white. These guys in the foreground are a little messy. I think they're cement and rebar. Uh, so they, they don't have a lot of appeal to me, uh, other than some texture. Oh, they're kind of cool. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Cool. I'm struggling with this because there, there is some texture there, as I said, and that does contrast nicely with this very kind of modern, gleaming LED bridge. 
uh, and I think, you know what, I think without them, it would be boring. So, I think so, too. So some things there, I just wish they weren't quite as messy as they are. Mm. Okay? Would you, you'd rather they be, like, perfect? Not perfect, but maybe not so rebar -y. I don't know. They kind of look, I don't know, they like, like look like claws. They do look a little like claws. I like that. The Kraken claws from the deep? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Danny. Another water one. Water is popular with longer exposures. Yes. Because you can either get it to smooth, silky smooth out, or get it to be flat and crystal clear. This water doesn't look like it was, it, like it was very, uh, I don't know. In motion? In motion. I agree. And one of the reasons I agree is I don't, I think it was very still. This is eight seconds, so not a terribly long exposure. But if you look at the tip tops of these masts, they are all pretty sharp. There was no real movement, a little bit over there. So this water was pretty still to begin with, but any little ripples have been uh, smoothed out. So Liam's inside. Does that mean the uh, door is shut? Yeah, the, it was shut okay. before. Sorry about that. Cat check. Um, so. I'm having weird, hi Liam, I'm having uh, a little bit of, I'm feeling indecisive. Mm -hmm. So I can't tell, so the, the warmth of the tungsten lights and then the blue of the boats, I find it really interesting that there is so much yellow and blue. Like I feel like, you know, blue is very nautical, so it's very you know, you'll see it in boats a lot, but mm -hmm. in this case, there's a lot of repeating blue in a lot of the boats. There's mm -hmm. almost like no other colors that you can see in this image. So that's kind of cool. And yellow, well, I guess it's more of like an orangey color, but even orange and blue or yellow and blue, they're complementary. So the blue and the yellow kind of works well, but I still would like to kind of see what it looks like in black and white. Does that mean we should do it? I guess so, since we've decided. Um, I, I like the color. In I this think case. I do too. Uh, again, I'm not crazy about that but yellow treatment. I well, I think that again, it's you know, it's something that you can't just change the treatment and say, okay, this is it. Like just because it's black and right, white doesn't right. mean it doesn't need more work. Right. I do, but I like the warmth on some of these boats. I, I noticed that there. I agree. There's a lot of blue. I think something's going on here. I think a lot of these boats are in some type of regatta going to use the regatta word first time in our critique. We got blue magic here. Back here it says blue haze. So, yeah, um, that's interesting. I, I, I like this image. I really, you know, the kind of mirror-like reflection down below is good. Got some bushes here that are bothering me a little bit. And over here we've got this bright light right yeah, on the very edge. Yeah, just crop that. Um, so we're going to just crop that in real quick um, because we don't need and then I think it's better. And I like that we have a little bit of stars in the sky as well. We're at 24 millimeter. Oh, the 24 f2.8. Nice sharp lens. So, all right. Uh, thank you, Tony. One that's already been turned black and white for us. So we can't see what it looked like in color. This is really cool. This reminds me of the uh, Henry cartier Berson idea of the uh, decisive moment. And that is, tell me a little more. Well, you know, the, I don't know if this person had been sitting here for a while waiting for a biker or this person knew this biker or what, but uh, just that this picture was taken at the right moment where the biker was in the right spot, uh, you know, framed by sort of the lower right part of the left side of the arch. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's... Yeah, I mean it's and it's perfectly composed with the subject on the lower third. So it's it's just really really nicely done composition wise, and even the treatment is really nice. Uh, yeah, it's. I agree. I, I love it. We got this contrast of the still biker. He's got just a tiny bit of motion. Actually, it looks like maybe a moped. A tiny bit of motion in his head, but otherwise still contrasting against the blur of the cars. And that contrasting against this, the Arc de Triomphe, which is just standing there, solid, imposing, lit up, very nicely exposed. Uh, 3.2 seconds. 
just about perfect. This is a really nice image. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Brady. This is similar in some ways. Yeah, so very much street photography. Um, I just love the pink umbrella. Not because mm -hmm. I like pink, because I don't. But because it contrasts against the rest of the image so well. It's, it's juxtaposed perfectly and framing's really good. Uh, there's some, some flare that I don't love. Yeah, it almost feels like there could be drops on the lens. Yes. Um, or, or at least drops in the air catching, but I think it's on the lens. Here we've got a little spot here, a little spot up here, and here and here. I'll watch out for that. It's definitely tough in rainy conditions. A lens hood can do wonders as far as keeping most drops off the lens. And then when you're not shooting, keep that camera pointed down. I also like the, I, I don't know why, but the reflection of the lights on the road on the lower left part of the image. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. This is a real, I think this is a really nice image. It's been worked on some. I, I'm noticing after looking at it for a little while, it took me a while to see this, but we've got some serious halo up here uh, and on this side as well. So you got to be careful about that. Uh, but other than that, I think this is a great image. Also, let's talk about the leading lines yes. on the road and then yes. in the buildings. Yep. It's just really and, well And done. our subject just off to the center to the right, just enough to give us the shot to follow those leading lines off to these buildings in the distance. And the tone there is fantastic. Yep. Great. Thank you. And it's very wide, too, 10 millimeters. That's cool. Thank you, Vincent. Another San Francisco. I think this last one I'm going to say is in New York just because I want to say we're bouncing from coast to coast. Okay. All right. Um, the first thing that strikes me about this image is I recognize the Golden Gate Bridge, but it is a shot that isn't typical. Yes. Uh, you know, that right away takes this image up a notch for me. Yeah. Uh, we're just getting just a glimpse of the bridge and those crazy lines that connect all of the cables. Uh, the suspension cables, and the city perfectly laid out in the background. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's definitely a unique perspective that I've never seen before. Um, and I like it a lot. Yep. I don't know that I would change anything. I mean, I could say turn it black and white, but I don't think... <laughs> I don't think that that's a, that would be a good idea. No, I don't because I like the city colors in the background. We have we we have just enough. The Golden Gate, the golden of the Golden Gate, I think could be worked on a little bit here. Well, I I would say like just in general, maybe uh, turn the temperature down to cool the image a little bit so that the sky and the uh, the water doesn't look so gray and smoggy, and that it actually there's a like a deep blue. Yeah, see, that's, I think that that's much better. better. And maybe add some contrast to, or just the blacks are just Ooh. almost unclipped. Yeah, so just a little bit more. Um, the other thing that, I, that I'm going to comment on is I don't know if this needs to be 45 seconds, though. It does add some smoothness and motion to this water here. But I think you could also shot it at a much shorter time yep. frame. But if this so. person did it at 45 seconds... They did it at 45 <laughs> what's seconds. What's the problem? Well, I'm just saying, you know, maybe they were, um, you know, late for getting home for dinner, and I'm just trying to save them 30 seconds of their life to say, you probably could have done this at 15 seconds. Although you wanted to hit, I think, you know, you were trying to hit F11 um, to get really... Actually, I'm going to take back some of what I said, because uh, you wanted that depth of field so that everything was in focus. Yeah. So, you know, you could you could go to F eight. You'd probably be fine as well at a hundred hundred and thirty five. I don't know. Well, yeah. I think you this person what? did it right. I think you're right. You were late for dinner, but so what? You got a great picture, and we like it. So thank you, Danny, Jeff. No, yes, this is from Jeff, who let me know that. Um, he got a little singed in this. He was the photographer. His son was the um, manacle steel wool spinner. We've seen these shots. I've done them a couple times now. They're a lot of fun. Uh, and yeah. if you haven't tried, I encourage you to do that unless you live in California or some other place that's bone dry and about to um, go up in flames. 
because they do throw flames all over the place. But six seconds, really nice F13. I think this is composed quite nicely and we've, we've got some sense of depth here because uh, the angle that um, was it Keenan is twirling at has thrown some right towards the camera. I like that. You know, I would like to see, actually this gives me an idea of something that maybe we can do sometime. Uh, a steel wool picture where you're actually right up against the person that's spinning the steel wool, like really, really close. Hmm. Because... And what and how would they be spinning it? Would they be spinning it vertically, horizontally, or some combination as Keenan is? is. Okay. And so what you would be capturing there, the bottom of the yeah, twirl you, and this bits here? Just you'd be capturing less of it, but you'd be capturing the expression and the, the person. Hmm. So they would have to be really still. It'd probably be yeah, a little tricky. Yeah, that'd but, be tricky. Okay. But I think that would be cool. Mm -hmm. That could be very neat. It would be it would be quite hard to stay still enough for six seconds as you're twirling this, I think, for your face to be captured. But these are neat. Thank you, Jeff. Now we have this quite amazing photo, and I like is it's geotag. This is from down in the southeast corner of Australia. I went and checked. Oops. Our first thought was, wow. Our second thought was. I don't think our first thought was wow. <laughs> My first thought was wow. Our second thought was, this is pretty busy. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me say what I like first. It, so this is, I think this was done with star stacking software or Photoshop where you take a, uh, a long exposure, maybe 10, 15 seconds at a time, or 30 seconds actually, because we do have that bit of metadata, but we don't have anything else up here other than ISO. And then you pause, you pause the camera for, couple of seconds and then you take another one and you repeat this process for an hour two hours you throw that all into Lightroom you go into statistics and I think it's average uh, might be one of the other ones and you can get something that looks like this what I like is that you found the Southern Cross uh, and found that South Pole Star I can't remember what it's called now in the north, it's called the North Star. Uh, and that gives us a focal point that everything is spinning around. And I like that it's off center. That's great. Don't put them directly in the middle. That's boring. Uh, I'm, I, I'm a little confused by what's going on over here. I feel like this is the Milky Way. And that looks amazing. But it's really just kind of hidden and muddy. And we're not quite sure what. And I'm not sure why that does come through partly, but not fully. And that's what makes me think this is star trail stacking. So the good off center, but we have a focal point. We've also got these rocks that ground us, but just so many stars. Yeah, I mean, the more I look at it, the more just the blur of the Milky Way, potentially, if that's what that is, and the other stuff, it, it all makes it look kind of ethereal. So it's, it's, it's a really cool image, um, but it just feels like overcrowded. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it almost seems like I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Okay. It's, it's definitely really, I, really cool. I think, and you know, this somebody put a lot of time and effort into this, and it is very cool, but I think I would like to see just one picture from here of the stars as points. Yeah, me be too. Because for us, I think this would be quite amazing because it seems like there's a lot of stars. And the foreground feels a little lost because there's so much going on in the sky, so... I feel like you're kind of doing, you know, that the, that place a little bit of a disservice by just making the sky stand out so, so, so much. Mm. You know, it's not the foreground. It's like, it's there, I see it, but it doesn't stand out that much. Okay. Now, we do have some stars as pinpoints in the sky. This is from Aurelian. Lightning storm with clear sky. So right away, that juxtaposition is neat because you usually don't get to see the stars and lightning at the same time. Yeah. We've got a 30 second exposure though. We've got this far off storm and above it, the lights are, tw or the stars are twinkling through. Yeah. I like that. Um, I like that there's a lot of negative space and that the sky looks very deep and blue and the storm and the stars. I would have retouched that green thing. Like just either desaturated completely. The green color or the light pole? The green color. Yeah. And the, it looks like the light pole's got a little bit of it. Yeah. 
So just add magenta or just desaturate it completely. No one will tell. Um, I this this doesn't do anything for me, um, and it's almost right in the center. So. I don't know. It, yeah, you're right. It is just right in the center, but it also that's kind of context and scale scale yeah I, was, I agree with that it does add a little bit of scale but i think we'd be okay without it and i really like that overall this image just makes me feel really small i'm a little person in this big universe with storms and stars above yeah that is cool yeah and i think i could still feel that without that strange light pole thing or maybe get it out to the side a little bit We've got Arbuckle Gathering at Sylvan Lake. This from looks Jeff. fake almost. It's crazy. Um, it's, it's a neat shot. Uh, we have, I, I'm going to say, maybe some fog in the background. I, I don't know what has created such a monochromatic landscape. You, I mean, we've obviously edited some, but we've got... Oh, we it don't, also looks like there's like a precipice. Behind that. Like the, it just, that's the end of the world. Yeah. Um, I think it's just, it is, it is our eyes deceiving us because of that gradient color yeah. gives it a sense of a drop off there. I, I do see what you're saying. We don't have any metadata at all for this, but I'm, I'm going to say that this was a very long exposure uh, that, that caused this lake surface to be so s smooth. We've got a little bit of the reflection of the trees there and threes. Uh, I, I just think this is a really neat image. Again, talking about negative space, it's got a ton of negative yeah. space and it works really, really well. Again, set just off to the right a little bit, so not centered. That's perfect. Rule of thirds. Yes. I like it. Yeah, me too. Thank you. And we've got the 84 at night from Ben C.R. So it looks like shot from an overpass. Yes. Uh, which, you know, I like that idea. But What's it, that? What? Go ahead. No, you go on. Well, I was just going to say, I think you're shooting through something. Uh, bars, fence bits, and it's showing up enough that it's distracting. Yeah. I, I guess I can sort of see what, the, the, you, you know, what the appeal of this image is. It looks kind of like dreamy and ethereal, um, but it's just too uh, flat. And the whites are, I guess the whites, if I'm looking at the histogram, they're not totally overexposed, but they kind of are because the, the streaks from the cars, that's, you know, that's overexposed. Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you not, can't. We're not gathering anything, getting right. anything back there. It's just like, I like the composition. Again, this road kind of curves off to the left, uh, you know, and we've got the leading line of this guardrail that seems kind of lit up, probably from the passing cars and the lights above. But uh, as I said, the stuff we're shooting through, and also I think shooting at F18 has, I'd like just a little bit more depth. I think that would bring out some of the crispness in the picture yes. and give us a little more, less flat. So I think this was good practice for you to to get the sort of motion streaks, um, but try it again and and maybe try try play with your settings a little bit so that the image doesn't look so um, just so flat and it's too bright. It's definitely way too bright. Yeah, a little um, darker. And maybe a different perspective, like go to a different place, then an overpass. I mean, I'm sure there are some cool overpasses. Uh, I mean, I think I like the overall composition if you can shoot here without getting that foreground stuff in the place. Not just the foreground. I mean, they're on the top right, there's like... A little bit hiding. Yeah, that's true. We should get rid of that. Just so, I mean, or maybe you could do a, you know, a symmetrical composition. Shoot right from the middle if you have access to that. And then make it completely symmetrical. Okay, great. Thank you, Ben. I think your name was Ben. Hey, thank you everybody to took the time to uh, submit your images and put your images out there. I know it's not always the easiest thing to do and I hope you got some good feedback uh, that will allow you to make better images in the future. As I said, we'll be back in mid-August with our next monthly critique challenge. Thanks so much for watching and uh, 
take a moment and hit that thumbs up button if you got any tips out of this that were helpful or you'd just like to thank us for our time. And if you're not already a subscriber, take a moment and press that subscribe button so that you can be notified of future videos like this, future challenges, and uh, just hear our voices in your ears and sometimes our cat meowing. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Goodbye. And we are recording right here as backup audio too. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's been a little bit of some time. A little bit of some time? <laughs>